Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, here to react to Trump's address in North Carolina at the Republican Party convention in Greensboro um, after the DOJ indicted him. Uh, also, if you have any uh, videos you'd like for me to, to react to, go ahead and drop it in the comment section and I will look at it and, and see what's up and, and we'll put it up. Um, anyway, well, without further ado, let's get into it. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Great crowd. This is beautiful. I want to thank Michael and congratulations on your re-election as party chairman. That's a big deal. That was a big deal. It's great to be back in North Carolina. Very special place. Very, very special place. We've had tremendous success here. We won it twice. We won the primaries twice, we won the election twice, it was great. Sit down, come on, let's all be with each other. We have nothing else to do tonight. I a lot of love to thank our outstanding NRCC chair. Chairman, where is the chairman? Richard Hudson, where is the chairman? Come on, Richard, stand up. We just got back from Georgia, and he's even a celebrity in Georgia. We had a great crowd in Georgia, too. He's fourth in line for speaker, and his wonderful wife, Renee, is incredible, and uh, she served four years, actually, in the White House as Kellyanne. Does anyone here of Kellyanne Conway? Nobody, right? She's so fantastic. But I remember Kellyanne. She was, she speaks so well. I'll be back. About, I'll just finish. Yeah, Kellyanne was just, um, Early on in the administration, especially, or even later on in the administration, midpoint, is when I start seeing a lot of her on the news in defense of Trump against these crazy narratives that they just kept putting out. So, props to Carrie, um, what's her name? Thank you. Thank the family. The family is fantastic. We appreciate it. Thanks also to one of the great stars of the party, one of the great stars in politics, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson, you that blood guy? I'm going to endorse Mark, but I'm not going to tell you about it tonight, okay? Hmm. I think Mark Robinson is that black guy. Time. Yeah, but you can count on it, Mark. Congratulations. Great job. You've been doing a fantastic job. We also have some warriors that we fight together with all the time, and we win a lot. We win most of the time. Representatives Dan Bishop. Where's Dan? Dan. Thank you, Dan. Dan Bishop. I don't know who that is. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Great job. Great job. We love him. Chuck Edwards. Chuck. Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you very much. And State House Speaker Tim Moore. Tim, thank you very much. Great job. Tim is doing a fantastic job. Thank you. For seven years, we've been engaged in an epic struggle to rescue our country from the sinister forces who actually hate it and want to destroy it. I really believe they want to destroy it. There can be no other reason. These forces are far stronger than Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran all put together because with the right leader, you saw that just three years ago, we have the right leader. All of those countries are absolutely no threat. They're not any threat to us. We talked about it before. Right now, however, they're putting us in the most dangerous position in the history of our country. We've never been in a position like this. There's never been such. Yeah, and I have to say that I remember, you know, I'm, I'm 41 years old, so I definitely remember my 30s for sure. It just happened. And a lot of that was um, during 
My early 30s was during Obama's presidency, and my late 30s was during Trump's presidency. And I can tell you, it was like night and day for me, 100% night and day. So to, to enter into my 40s and then to see this reverse of us kind of going backwards just in society and culture and they just want to bring back up racism when it's like, okay, first of all, I just get sick to the stomach even using that word racism because it's such a dumb word to be used on each other when we're all just one race, the human race. Dumb. So I don't even like to entertain that word. It's dumb. Anyway, uh, let's continue. It's danger. It's because of the weaponry, the power of the weaponry. And we have people that have no clue. We have people in office that have no clue. Together we stand up to the globalists. We stand up to the Marxists. We stand up to the rhinos because they're very bad. Because you don't know where they're coming from, the rhinos. The rhinos, you don't know where they're coming from. We stand up to the communists and the environmental extremists because I'm an environmentalist. I really believe that. We've done some great things for the environment, but you have extremists and you don't know whether or not they're really serious about some of this stuff. It's not even believable. We stand up to the open borders fanatics destroying our country. The radical left Democrats, they're lawless, partisan, prosecutors and the fake news media. We have a lot of it back there, but not all of that are fake. That's a big group back there, by the way. Dan, I think they're here for you, maybe. <laughs> and on November 5th, 2024, we're going to stand up to the corrupt political establishment. We're going to evict a totally corrupt president named Joe Biden from the White House. And we're going to finish the job that we so successfully started. Probably there's been no more important four years than we had. We did a great job, all of us together. Things we did, nobody thought were possible. I put everything on the line. I will never yield. I will never be deterred. I will never stop fighting for you. No. I wasn't leading in the polls by so much, we'd have no difficulty. And you know, they're the party of disinformation. They say, oh, we want to run against Trump. In the meantime, we got 5,000 prosecutors after us because they don't want to run against Trump. We beat them the first time. We did much better the second time. We beat them. We did much better the second time. More than any other president, more votes than any other sitting president has ever gotten, and more votes in terms of the margin. By the way, I voted for Trump in 2020. I actually, before I moved into this apartment, I stayed downtown Fort Worth and uh, had my MAGA hat on, and um, I, I had the opportunity to hear Trump speak at the White House. First person in my family to ever hear a president speak, to go and hear a president speak. And um, it was after he had recovered from COVID, after he had been released from uh, Walter Reed's hospital. And um, I think I'm saying that right. And he spoke at, uh, this, at the Southern Lawn. That's where we were. And it was amazing, October 10th, 2020, I'll never forget that day. I can't believe that it was the first time I had ever been in Washington, D.C. And <clears throat> then I got to go to the White House and I actually found out after I got off the plane and was trying to check into my hotel, I had received an email letter letting uh, uh, all of us know that Trump had uh, heard that we were coming in town, so he invited us to the White House. That wasn't even part when I went to Washington. I got invited to do, to participate in a march for our law enforcement because at the time the media was and every other entity, you know, for one reason or another, was was in support of defunding the police and 
getting the police forces out of certain communities that actually need them. But because of the narrative of this whole black and white and I'm a victim and all this stuff. And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, all, all, all of this revealed itself as a watcher, someone just watching, it's like, okay, I can see what's happening, I can see what's going on. So I'm glad to be here um, at this moment, but I was very discouraged when, they, uh, when the election went the way it did. That was really, because it was the first time I had ever participated in an election process, first time I was doing my homework and um, you know trying to learn about all these candidates and uh, so this is uh, you know it's a great time to be alive but he's right where our country is in a, not a good place and it was in a, a great place when he was president no doubt no doubt from 63 million and they had millions and millions, no presidents done that. Usually they get less the second time. You know, you get tired of them. They weren't tired of me because we got many more votes. With your vote, we will take back our country from these fascists and thugs. And we will indeed make America great again. From the beginning, our America First agenda has been an existential threat to the rotten political class that gets rich and powerful at your expense. Erasing our borders, cheating like we've never seen before in elections, exporting our jobs and squandering our blood and treasure on endless foreign wars. We didn't start any wars first time in 71 years. Wow. No wars. They all said, Trump will get us into really? a war. It's got that personality. No, it was my personality that kept us out of wars. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> but we finished some wars. We finished ISIS, 100% of the caliphate. We knocked out ISIS, we did whatever we had to do, and we were respected all over the world as warriors without having to fight wars. You know who doesn't fight too many wars? China. Do you ever notice? It's all talk. It's beautiful military. They try and beat you economically, not militarily, and there's something very smart about that, isn't there? But uh, they respected us. They respected your president, and they respected our country. They no longer respect us, and it's very sad what's happening. They've launched one hoax, these people we have to deal with, and they've launched witch hunt after witch hunt, and they just try to stop our movement. They want to do anything they can to thwart the will of the American people. It's called election interference. That's what they're doing now. This is election interference. And we've never seen it on a scale like this. And you have to understand, the other side is downright crooked. That's why we now call him Crooked Joe Biden, because, you know, we took the name away from Hillary. She suffered enough with that name. <laughs> so I retired the name from Hillary because I wanted to bring it over to Biden because he's probably worse than she ever was, and that's wow. saying something. Wow. <laughs> As the Durham report proved, they spied on my campaign. They forged false evidence to get illegal surveillance warrants. The FBI offered $1 million for a fictitious dossier written by a foreign spy to try and frame me for treason. We mm. beat it all off, didn't we? They put our country through hell and they knew it was a lie the entire time. They knew it was a lie. They knew the laptop from hell was a lie. They knew everything. Remember, it's not me they're going to go after. And if you think of it, whoever took my place, and I hope it's not going to be anybody because we're the ones that are going to save this country because our country's in trouble. <laughs> They'll go after that person and that person will not be able to withstand the fire. And I know all of them. I know them all. And they actually admit it. They come to me, how do you stand this? And I usually look at them and say, in a sick way, I sort of enjoy it. Because it exposes them. 
Oh. <laughs> it exposes them for what they are, and it's also lifted the poll numbers to even <laughs> higher lengths. Have you seen this? The polls are through the roof uh, with the fundraising, small dollar fundraising. Trump is of a level. He is just but of a level. Still, mm. You get indicted over nothing. You get indicted over the Presidential Records Act, which they don't even admit they call it the Espionage Act. These are sick people. We had Russia, Russia, Russia. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. The no collusion Mueller witch hunt. Impeachment hoax number one. Remember the perfect phone call? Impeachment hoax number two. The illegal censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop from hell. The 51 intelligence officials who falsely said it was Russian disinformation. Remember they said that? I said, nobody believes that. Who would believe that? You see the pictures, horrible pictures. The real pictures haven't been exposed yet. But all of this, and it just kept coming and coming and coming, and it would for another person in my position, but they wouldn't be able to handle it. They wouldn't be able to take it because you're dealing with crazy lunatics. Now the Marxist left is once again using the same corrupt DOJ and the same corrupt FBI and attorneys general and local district attorneys to interfere in our election at a level that our country has never witnessed before. These criminals cannot be rewarded. They must be defeated. We have to defeat them soundly. In the end, they're not coming after me. They're coming after you, and I'm just standing in their way. The baseless indictment of me by the Biden administration's weaponized Department of Injustice will go down as among the most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. I think it already is when you think about it. And certainly going back to Obama, when I said, you know, they spied on my campaign, everybody, including the fake news media back there, they said, oh, that's so crazy. Turned out I was right. I don't know what that um, lady's name is on 60 Minutes. That was, because I remember that interview that Trump did with her. I forget her name. He was like, because I can hear him saying her name. Um, but anyway, when he was like, they spied on my campaign, and she was like, they didn't spy. You can't verify that. There's no evidence of that. Forget her name. I can see her eyes, too. And just like, <laughs> so now that it's actually the Durham report has come out and it's actually proven it's just I don't know what it will take to wake everybody up and see what's happening and what's been happening you know you look at our neighborhoods I grew up in a neighborhood that that's been in this mess in the 80s and just the mentality and it's just like I'm so I'm honestly you know that there's there's a lot of emotions and evolved uh, involved because and that has evolved <laughs> because you know you're, you're you're sad at one point and even at uh, outright depressed at, at one point then at another point you're glad you're free you're glad that the, the knowledge that you know that you have now that you don't have to keep going down the wrong paths and you don't have to because basically we were born as in a new type of slavery basically basically we were born in a new type of slavery and one of the keys that worked in the old slavery uh, to keep people slaves was to keep them ignorant keep them out of the knowing so you know now that I know I'm so happy that I'm out of there, but at the same time, like I see everybody around me that I love, people that I've gone to church to, uh, church with, and just made family with, still in that. So I just I'm still prayerful to God that all of this, like He said, you know, he, He's actually like and He's like kind of in a sick way, but it's not in a sick way. It's just like for me, it's not like it's like it's like look, look. Look, look at this all coming out. Okay, so can we all come together and let's let's do something? You know, let's let's constitutionally obviously and, and you know 
peacefully, but if we can all make our voice heard together, but it's like still silence. I talked to my mom, we argued back and forth, and I ain't heard not a single word. This fake administration has been in, sorry. This, whatever's this fiasco that's happening at the White House. Uh, I tried to tell them and tell them and tell them and they just kept shutting me down. And so, you know, their silence is so deafening right now. The least they could do is just say, hey, we see what you were trying to say. Let's, let's try to warn everybody else so that, and then the rest of the community, let's, you know, because we got to get to, to the, to the point where we're going to like the NAACP or we're going to the ET networks or we're going to places like that and, and multitudes and saying, hey, whatever y'all doing now, this is not black entertainment. Tell this is not this doesn't represent us. You know, image image all this stuff, the image awards and NAACP and, and all these other black organizations, they go out there and say this is what black means. We need to all come together and say, no, that's not what it means. And that's a slap in our ancestors' faces who died with integrity, with humility, with kindness, with gentleness, with patience. Some of them knew they would never be free, but they prayed for the next generation. And they kept, kept it on, kept their head down, they kept hustling. And what we're doing now is just so... Uh, yeah, so we just have to just remain faithful, remain faithful unto God, knowing that He has a plan at all of this. I'm gonna watch another few minutes, and then I'll do a part two of this because I've done a lot of talking in this one. But I have to introduce myself so you guys can know exactly who you're dealing with with these reaction videos. All right, Trump. So we're gonna do another three minutes. This vicious persecution is a travesty of justice. You're watching Joe Biden try to jail. His leading political opponent, think of it, this is like third world country stuff, tried to put his opponent, who's leading him by a lot, wants to put him in jail over following a civil act. This is a simple thing. The Presidential Records Act is all under the Presidential Records Act, as it should be. It's all under the... Clinton Sox case. You know what this Clinton Sox case is? That's where they sued Clinton and he ended up winning that he could keep the things that we're talking about. It's all under that, Mr. Congressman. We discussed that before. But this is more like Stalinist Russia or Communist China that we're dealing with. These people have reached a level of Trump derangement syndrome that nobody thought was possible. Wow, he said it. I never thought, frankly, that I this like could that. happen in America. You go after a president that got, again, the most votes by far of any sitting president in history, gets out of office, and because I'm running, if I wasn't running, wouldn't even be talking about it. If I weren't leading, we wouldn't be talking about it. But we're leading by a lot. We're leading to sanctimonious by massive numbers. He's, he's heading south quickly. He's no personality. Keep that. I he doesn't have a personality <laughs> to win. He's got no personality. <laughs> and you know. But look, like, listen, <laughs> listen now. Um, I, I guess I, I I didn't come to this realization until I realized, you know, okay, wait a minute. Why is Ron DeSantis running? He's you know, because if he saw what we saw in 2020, at the end of 2020, then he should be behind Trump. But he's actually trying to run against him. So it's like nobody in right now, anybody in the Republican Party that's throwing their hat in, is like, why? Y'all all need to step down and just let Trump run by himself. And we make a statement as a country saying, uh, this is who should, should be there right now. And this is who we want there right now or whenever the next election is. <sighs> you know, remember that when he came to me, he had virtually no hooks. 
He was dying, as the expression goes. He was, a, he was dead. I said, George Washington could endorse you. It wouldn't matter. No, sir, if you endorse me, I'm telling you I'm going to win. I said, let's give it a shot. I endorsed him. He went up like a rocket ship, and shortly thereafter, they had the primary, and he won. And then we had to get him through a crackhead. But nobody knew he was a crackhead at the time. At the time, he was the hottest politician in the Democrat Party, male version. Female version, Stacey Abrams. It's true. Stacey Abrams and him. And, but he was hard to beat, and Ron said to me, uh, I don't think I can beat him. I said, you beat him, you beat him. And I did three rallies, massive, massive, massive rallies, thousands and thousands of people. And I said, you're going to win. And he ended up winning. And then they started cheating at the end. Do you remember all the votes were disappearing over days? Oh, 10, my God. Rick Scott, same thing. And I called in. You wouldn't believe it. The FBI. Would you believe it? And it stopped. So at least they did something right. But I got him in. And then they said to him, I said, congratulations, Ron. I didn't know him that well. He was one of the many people that supported me during, me during the impeachment hoaxes. So I'd see him on television a little bit, but I didn't know him well. Then I heard three years later, they said, would you run against the president? And he said, I have no comment. That means he's going to run. I said, I got this guy in, Mr. Congressman. And he said he's going to run. And then I haven't been very nice to him since then. <laughs> <laughs> we're leading in Florida by 28 points. And people are not happy with him. And he's a lousy campaigner. Remember that when he came to see me, he had almost no points. He was ready to look for a new career. You told me that better than anybody. He was looking for a job. And when I endorsed him, it was like magic. It was like he was a rocket ship. But I believe in loyalty. And, you know, it's just very disloyal. If somebody right. got me into office, and I got him in. You know, some people I help. Some people I help, and some people I get. And I got this guy in, along with some others. But some people I help, and that's different. Some people I, I help a little bit. Some people I help a lot. But some people I get in. I got this guy in. So, you know, you'd think there'd be a little bit of a loyalty. And it's bad for the Republican Party, frankly. But let's see what happens. But we're leading by a lot. But meanwhile, Joe Biden had troves and troves, thousands of boxes, classified documents from his time as vice president and even as a senator. And boy, when you're a senator and you take classified documents, that's a big deal. I watched Dick Durbin get so angry about it. I said, well, he'll be brought back into the fold eventually. So what, so so you mean to tell me? And I don't know, but you know, he's saying it, you know, and I'm obviously, you know, it, it doesn't seem like the news is going to check into what he was saying, what he's saying as far as um, Joe Biden, be, Joe Biden being a senator and taking classified documents with him. So, you know, um, I don't know, you know how they're going to go about doing that but i will stop the video here thanks for watching thanks for participating if you have any comments please leave it in the comment section i will definitely look and i will respond um also if you have any suggestions for uh videos for me to to check out put it down there and let me know uh i'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching yeah. Great, I'm done.